Hi, this is Elaine Goodman on Num FM. On this podcast is my interview with Biggest Loser trainer and mentor, Michelle Bridges. I was able to interview her after a talk that she did at the Stall Town Hall recently. I hope you enjoy. What is your educational background? My educational background is I went uh, right through high school to do my HSC and from there I just started doing fitness leader courses. Um, I did several courses in in uh, becoming an instructor and then I did my personal trainers course um, and from there I just kept on going to lots of conventions. I was always involved in fitness. It was always going to be that. That was going to be my career. So I continued doing courses within that industry. Um, I didn't actually go to university um, but I have learned so much over the years that it's really covered me um, as far as you know the biology that I need for for being a personal trainer um, yeah I couldn't recommend a better job for anyone did you always want to be a personal trainer uh, I guess I did always want to be a personal trainer from around about my 20s but before then I didn't even know there was such a thing as a personal trainer I just knew that I wanted to be somehow involved in sport and health and fitness so I guess it was an evolution that I turned around and thought, wow, that's the job I want. I want to be a personal trainer. How did you get picked to be a trainer on The Biggest Loser? I have a very strong background in my fitness industry. Um, I've been working in the fitness industry now for about 20 years and have trained thousands and thousands of other trainers and instructors. I've presented at many global and international conventions and national conventions. So when they were looking for a trainer for the show, they went to the fitness industry and, and sort of checked in at who was doing what. So I guess my name was thrown into the hat then. Thousands? Um, actually, no. There, there was un- they only actually interviewed six girls, funnily enough. They didn't put it out an adver- uh, in an advertisement. They just went through word of mouth and very quietly went about who they wanted to select and looked at the, um, each individual's um, education and, and qualifications. There was a lot more involved than just being um, very fitness savvy. They wanted someone that could you know, speak well and was passionate and could get the, you know, put their words together without, you know, falling, their sentences falling apart. So there was a few things that they were looking for other than just the fitness qualifications. Considering the contestants were losing weight anyway, did you ever expect them to be as competitive as they were during the challenges? The interesting, that's a great question actually, and the interesting thing with that is that nobody is really that competitive when they start on the show. Everybody's there just to lose the weight, get fit, and, and, and you know, learn about nutrition and exercise. But what happens is that as people get fitter, as people lose weight, their self-confidence starts to soar. Their self-belief starts to soar, and suddenly they turn around and go, you know what, I can be competitive. I can compete, I can win, I can do all the things that I never thought possible. So that's when they start start to get really competitive closer to the end of the show. Do you, do you feel the show represents the contestants' experiences accurately? Yeah, I really do. I mean, there's a lot of film that doesn't get shown, um, but it's a pretty accurate um, assessment of what goes on. You get to see people's breakdowns and breakthroughs. Um, you get to see them really work through the issues that they've had regarding food, regarding body image, and you get to, to really see them come out on the other side of that. I think that that's why the show's been so successful, because it really inspires the people that watch it. Do you think it's uh, uh, realistic for people on the outside? Oh, look, it's, a, it's like the AIS, you know, like we take these people in, they're in there 24 hours a day, the main focus is on exercise and nutrition, you know, who gets that in real life? But what people get to see is that it's possible. They get to see that someone who is 206 kilograms, who's never done any exercise in their life and that eats very badly and has really low self-esteem, can suddenly become competitive, lose weight and see a totally different future. And I think that's really where the inspiration comes from. You are so well known for being a strict trainer. Do you ever find people who gain better results from being nurtured rather than being pushed to their limit? Uh, look, I, I, I do get <laughs> I do get seen as being the tougher trainer or the stricter trainer, but you know I know there's times to be tough and there's also times to be empathetic. And I think I really tr- do try to strike that balance. Um, you know. At the end of the day, everybody has come in to get 
specific results and the reason that they're the weight they are and the reason that they have done nothing about it for so many years is because there is intrinsically a laziness in there um, and and there's times when I have to sort of sort that out but there's also times when I come when I come in and I'm very nurturing and I'm very empathetic it's just striking the balance and I think that ultimately the contestants truly respect that what is your career highlight so far uh, I've had a few career highlights. One of them was being uh, nominated as the Australian Fitness Leader of the Year. Um, and I guess the next highlight was actually being able to be on a show like The Biggest Loser and, and speak to so many Australians. Like there's two, over two million people that watch that show. So what a highlight to be able to speak to that many people about something I'm passionate about. And finally, after The Temptation, did you ever eat any of the junk food for yourself? <laughs> Great question, but no. <laughs> um, look, no, I definitely didn't eat any of the junk food myself, but I will say that I give myself a treat meal every week. I, uh, I have, you know, whatever I want. If I go out for dinner, I'll have, one, I'll have a couple of glasses of wine and I'll have some cheese and crackers and I'll have, you know, maybe even dessert. But I just do it once a week and then the very next morning I'm up and I'm training and I'm back on the program. Michelle Bridges, thank you very much. Love the show and I hope I wish you luck for the next Biggest Loser series and for the rest of your career. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great questions. <laughs>